Happy Missions Week. Happy Missions Week to all. Happy Missions Week. Happy Missions Week. Happy Missions Week. Jesus prophesied in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The Church of Pentecost is one of the results of Jesus' prophecy. Possessing the nations, a people of God unleashed to transform their world. Powerful prophetic words flowing from the prophecy of Jesus. This theme is prophetic. The waves of the Holy Spirit to really transform our spheres and our world has been caught in every nook and cranny of the Church of Pentecost. This vision 2028 is inspired. This vision has come as a result of the leadership of the Holy Ghost and I believe that the Holy Spirit is leading the church along this path. The possessing the nation's agenda is scripture. The possessing the nation's agenda is the mind of Christ. It is the mind of God from the beginning. There's so much life in it. In fact, the whole City Church idea is birthed by this vision. We took the chairman's idea of Gospel Sundays and we made it our natural. Whatever is brought from, from the international executive, we really embody that and it works. It works. These words are pregnant with results. And as we step out in faith, the God of the vision, the Lord God Almighty, causes the gates of the nations to open up to us. Results, results, results everywhere. Results begging for workers. Those who went out sowing are coming back with great results. By the grace of God, by your prayers, your contribution and support, we have added 19 nations in 2023. Outside Ghana, we are operating in 169 nations, including Ghana, by the grace of God, the Church of Pentecost is present in 170 nations. To God be all the glory. No one, no personality, no entity, no person takes the glory for himself. All glory belongs to God. It's the doing of the Lord. In the United States of America, a great door has been opened in the U.S. Army onto the church. Imagine the Church of Pentecost mentoring and discipling members of the U.S. Army through the U.S. military base churches. We have planted about six churches in some of the military base in the United States. So far, the future of this ministry looks great because the U.S. Army has given us a space in the Killeen, Texas military base where we have started practicing Pentecostal chaplaincy on post. And we have our chaplain, um, Pastor Captain Dr. Jehu Jima, who is in charge of the on post uh, space. The Lord told me that it will be a great avenue to reach out to the whites and other nationals. By the grace of God, the military-based churches are flourishing. This is an entry for the church to have influence and also to provide valuable Pentecostal service in the U.S. military. I was born a Muslim, and by the grace of God, I was a believer in Christ, but I did not know how to actually turn my life to Christ. But by the grace of God, I met Mama Dora and Pastor Berima. And with the help of Pastor Wusu, and First Lady Sandra have been doing great and by the grace of God I was baptized and I'm a true believer in Christ and I've given my life to Christ as of today. I will be proudly say yes, I am the secretary of the church and I'm doing what God has asked me to do to serve Jesus Christ. Before we came here, um, 
you know, we were praying to God, asking God and believing for a church. And he ended up sending us uh, to this church. Uh, when we came in, we knew it was the right place. There was a lot of love, a lot of genuine love. They would call, they would check on us, and that really encouraged us. And when the Lord confirmed that this is the right place and that he would uh, use us here, it is evident right now with just what my husband said. He's the secretary of this district, and I've also, you know, by the grace of God, I'm also a deaconess. Things that we could, you know, never imagine. The U.S. military base churches, it's an example of what we mean when we unleash the church. There is also result waiting and grace available for the opening of more city churches and more indigenous churches. The church in Netherlands has opened its third city church. It is amazing the numbers that the Lord is bringing through the city churches. I was in Nijmegen to inaugurate the city church in Nijmegen and the capacity of the auditorium could only take a hundred people. But just on the first day, some had to go home because the numbers exploded. Now we had to think of going for a bigger auditorium because the numbers just for the first day who registered were more than the capacity of the auditorium. And these are people who are no mean people in society, but by the grace of God, the gospel is reaching out to them and they are accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal savior. Celebrities are coming in. All sorts of people from all professions are coming in to the glory of God. I really see that this is a spark of bigger things. I'm looking at city churches owning stadia. I'm looking at prime ministers coming from city church. I'm looking at city churches having big corporate organizations that really influence society. The U.S. Capital City Church is also running with a vision. It was my mission to just make myself aligned with God. And since I've been here, I have just enjoyed my time. And I have walked away from Jesus. Capitol Camp knowing how to speak in tongues, to be able to hey. amplify my prayer. Come I told on. the girls in my room that I want to stay in D.C. because of Capital City. So thank you so much. Being one, a Nigerian girl coming out here, it's just, it's everything that I needed for myself. So I want you to know that you have blessed me. This ministry has blessed me. This ministry is a reminder that indeed that there is a remnant and you guys are the remnant. It is he that sent us to the nations. He provides us with tools and he provides us with results, breaking cultural and racial barriers that had been a challenge for years. God is breaking through skin color and cutting through cultures and races to generate results that are really unprecedented for the possessing the nation's agenda. The barrier of color, the barrier of race, and the barrier of nationality are all melting, giving way to the superior race and superior nation, the nation called the Kingdom of God. Galatians 3.28 is now being rewritten in our generation. That now in the Church of Pentecost, there is no Indian, there is no Pakistani, there is no Udu, there is no Australian, there is no European, there is no American, there is no Ghanaian. We are all one and we meet as one and it is very beautiful in the sight of God. The Lord has graciously opened the doors of Asia to us, planting indigenous churches not only at home but also away from home. These are indigenous Indians, these are indigenous um, Pakistanis who have all accepted Christ Jesus and they are worshipping in the church of Pentecost.
surrender my life to you. Possessing the nation's agenda is to have a multicultural church which would draw people from all the cultures and languages to the saving knowledge of Christ. The Church of Pentecost had a vision of planting Asian community churches in UK. The church was birthed in the month of January 2023. We started off right in our living room with just two people. And today we have people from different nations. We have people from Pakistan, we have people from India, we have people from China, we have people from Mauritius. And worshipping together is just so amazing. We are believing as a church to plant multicultural churches all across UK. Brazil is doing amazingly well building indigenous and multicultural churches. <laughs> We prayed for indigenous congregations and the Lord answered. Now it's time to equip and prepare indigenous leaders for a more glorious and sustainable future. The church is supposed to raise ministers who will be able to raise parishioners to possess the nations. We are doing our best to make sure that the universities or the colleges that we have uh, were resourced, like we have uh, Birmingham Christian College, and then we also have Bible School uh, in the United States. We are trying to revamp the one that we have in South Africa. And then we have one in Cote d'Ivoire. There are many theological institutions of the Church of Pentecost across the globe. And what we are doing is that we are raising and equipping indigenous leaders so that they can take care of the churches themselves. The Pentecost Church, Bible College, Pakistan by Apostle Emmanuel We bless the Lord for the unprecedented results. The new multinational phase of the Church of Pentecost is here with us and it is marvelous in our sight. But there is more, endless possibilities, endless potential. The work is not finished. There's still a lot to be done. Let's take India for one. India is the most populated nation in the world. And Christianity is about two to three percent and so majority of them are Hindus and that bleeds my heart. Our members are about 11,000 and what is 11,000 against 1.4 billion people and so there's still work to be done. We thank God that something has been done over the years uh, but there's still a lot to be done in India. If we go to Pakistan for one, it's an Islamic country yet they are not against Christianity. Indonesia, for one, we have just started our missions there. Our missionary is doing very well. And we are praying that God will open those places up for us. If you are able to win 1% of the population of India and 1% of the population of Pakistan into the kingdom of God and into the Church of Pentecost, the center of gravity of the Church of Pentecost will leave Africa, and for that matter, Ghana, into Asia. The Bible says that with God all things are possible. So Asia is not an impossible continent. Asia is a possibility. Until we get to that point where we say that we have saturated the whole world in such a way that we don't even have any space to operate, we are not satisfied. Our missionaries are risking it all. They are ready 
to sacrifice all to possess more territories if we will give them more resources. About 30 more nations to go and the Church of Pentecost would have sent the gospel of Jesus Christ from Ghana to every nation on the face of the earth. Our target is every nation on the surface of the earth. I believe that by midway through the Vision 2028, we should have been able to cover the entire nations of the world. Because the Spirit of God is at work, the Spirit of God is behind what we are doing. We still want our members who are traveling to go out with the fire of the Holy Ghost so that we'll be able to win many other places, cities, towns and villages where we do not have the Church of Pentecost. We will have to reach out and then plant churches there. Break out from your fears if you are listening. Even if you are a church member, you are a potential church planter. The Holy Spirit has already taken the lead. All you need to do is to follow. Move for the church should not be a monument. It must always be a movement. God strategically positions us at various places not only for our selfish gain but for his kingdom and for his glory and so if i have an opportunity to go and study in germany if i am transferred by my work to france to afghanistan to wherever wherever i find myself primarily god has a reason why he sent me there and the reason why he sent me there includes his kingdom the building of his kingdom and also for his glory wherever you find yourself you are a missionary we had an elder who was going to antigua and Barbuda. as soon as he got there he contacted the international missions office and straight away we contacted um, our national head and the church in canada to link up with this elder um, and now we have a church in antigua and Barbuda to the glory of god and then we also have an elder um, who uh, was worshipping with Firestone um, Worship Center and had the opportunity to go to Suriname to work. And um, he has indicated that there is the willingness to start the Church of Pentecost in Suriname. And we are eagerly waiting to break the news of what the Lord has begun in the nation of Suriname. So these are just examples of how ordinary church members pastors um, other people and associates pensa members who travel as soon as they get to the ground begin to have the realization that they did not come for uh, personal gains but they came also as a result of the kingdom business when you acquire a visa know that you have been unleashed when you get admission in that school know that you have been unleashed when god connects you to people know that you have been unleashed. Asia is the most populous continent with a population of more than 4.75 billion people. It is also the least evangelized. Billions are waiting to hear what God has sent us to tell them. There is more work to be done than has already been done. God still needs us. Let me take this opportunity to once again thank all Church of Pentecost members, ministers and wives, officers globally, everyone for your love for the missions enterprise of this church. In fact, over the years, you have been giving a lot and we do not take this lightly at all. We want to thank donors who have always been supporting the Church of Pentecost Missions Enterprise. We pray that the Lord will open the heavens for you daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, in the name of Jesus. This year is also another opportunity. As the numbers have increased hugely, there is the need for more funds to be committed to the enterprise. There is the need for more logistical support. There is the need for more church buildings and mission houses. As you know, sometimes you cannot just say, I am going to build in another nation. But what you can do is to help us to purchase properties in the nations. What you can do is to help us to secure vehicles for our missionaries and then for the churches. What you can do is to help us to secure prime locations for our churches.
This is the land by the grace of God through the government we have had. Uh, it's 2,100 meter square. This land can be used to build a temple and a mission house if we are able to purchase. It's in the middle of the city of Brasilia. This is a representation of the needs across the globe. Being in the city is very, very important. It's important for us to look at the city work very well so we can break through to the indigenous of the nations and then we can also uh, have the adequate resources to be able to reach out to uh, even the hinterlands. The call to give to us missions is not a call by the church nor its leaders. It is a call by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Must he struggle to get anything from us? While we dream of second cars and second houses, please let us remember that the Lord is looking for chapels in which the people he has bought with his precious blood will worship. Our missionaries are risking their lives to carry the gospel to dangerous nations. How many of the 8,760 hours in the year do we commit to praying for missionaries? While we ask God for things to make our lives more comfortable than it already is, let us remember to make some allowance in our budget towards taking more territories and possess more nations for our Lord Jesus. We appeal to you greatly that please look at the future and what the Lord has in store for us. Some of us can adopt nations, some can adopt districts, some can adopt some city churches, some can just raise funds by family, by businesses, some businesses can adopt other nations to, to, to actually take care of them. Please remember the missions work in prayer. When you are praying, don't forget to pray for missions. Help us in prayer so we can raise missionaries for the work of missions and then God will also give us the human resource that we need to be able to penetrate in the land. We also are asking you to continue to support us financially. It will take money to be able to do this work that we are doing. We will encourage friends of missions and any other um, group of people, families, whatever, who want to do more for this enterprise. May the Lord bless you. There is one assurance that we can give you, that whatever payment that you give us for so far as missions is concerned, it will not be diverted into any other thing. But whatever money that you give us will go into missions as it has been given unto us. Please, you can trust God and trust the people of God that God has put in place to manage our resources. So we count on your prayer. We count on your financial support. We count on your advice and then your encouragement to be able to do this work that God wants us to do. Remember, the work of missions is on the heart of God. And that is what we are supposed to do. So support us in any way, in any form. May the Lord bless you as you take up the work of mission seriously. Help us. The monies you gave us will never go waste. We will use them well and to plant churches and to build mission houses and to uh, build structures for our parishioners to worship in. So please, once again, do us good. Give us financial support uh, besides the prayer and the moral support that you give us and we'll be able to use your monies uh, to plant a lot of churches and save many souls. God bless you.